Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Season 3 of Disenchantment. And this is Netflix show from Matt Groening, who did like The Simpsons and Futurama, and sets play takes place in Dreamland, and our lead character, Bean, is a kind of rough-around-the-edges princess, and after the first two seasons, Bean's been on plenty of adventures with her friends Elfo, and you have Lucy, and all these other different characters, and where things leave off is they fall into this ditch under the city where there's a bunch of like creepy nocturnal looking cave dwelling elves. And you go from there. And the show has has this feeling of it bounces all around, but we always wind up in the same place. And that does continue in this season, and it's probably the most problematic aspect of the show is that things progress, characters develop, and new things happen, but it always feels like we're back in the same exact situation in terms of, here we go, back in Dreamland, something crazy's happening. And you go off on these adventures. This season, you spend a little bit more time in Steamland, which is like the steampunk place, and you have Rick Iotes character who's a fun addition to the cast and one of the more interesting episodes there's a whole sequence where Bean falls in love with this mermaid and they go on to this wonderful evening this romantic evening and you're left wondering did this really happen was this all a dream and it seems like for us the audience it probably did but Bean doesn't know and there's episodes like that that shake things up and add a little bit of interest the humor I always laugh. I enjoy the humor quite a bit in this show. It's There's some slapstick, there's some silliness, but there's also a lot of references and satire based off of all kinds of different like fairy tales and creatures and all kinds of stuff like that. They take our characters in this season, like you have King Zog, who's voiced by John DiMaggio, who's spends most of an episode buried alive and then goes completely insane for most of the season. And he probably is the least interesting arc in this season because, like, he's just kind of going crazy, but John DiMaggio has plenty of fun doing it. And you have different episodes building up different things. You bring back of uh, other characters like Matt Berry popping back up again as this now pig prince. And Matt Berry's fantastic, and I enjoy his contributions to the show. There's also a real sense of mystery in this season about something's going on underneath in terms of ruling Dreamland, and there's some interesting turn of events that develop throughout the season leading up to the end of the season, which leaves open a pretty big change and shift that could potentially happen in the next season, which I'm very interested in. And throughout this whole entire time, you have Sharon Horgan, who plays... Bean's mother, who just keeps popping in and out, and most like, she's most like the consistent villain antagonist of this show, and you have some great moments between the two of them, even earlier in the season, Bean's disguised as her, and it's really funny, and it leads up to some really big changes for each of our characters at the very end of this season that lead up, Elfo's probably the least interesting, but there's an interesting twist with what happens with Lucy and where he winds up. And then leading to Bean being confronted by a very fiery situation, and I'm going to leave it at that. But this show is a lot of fun. The voice actors are fantastic. A lot of, like, Simpsons and Futurama uh, alum, especially Futurama, pop up in this show. And they all do a fantastic job. Abby Jacobs, uh, Jacobson... Eric Andre and Nat Faxon are fantastic as our three leads in this show. It's a lot of fun, and I enjoy it quite a bit. They do a lot of fun different episodes going to different places, even if it doesn't feel like it progresses as much as you would expect a show to progress over the course of ten episodes. I'm still out of ball watching it. But those are my thoughts on Season 3 of Disenchantment. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some TV. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.